So, so welcome, I'm Katie Covey. I'm the DRE for the Soul Matters Sharing Circle. And I am going to run the slides and talk about the 10 or more enhancements that we are planning for the RE packets for next year, 2021-22. As an opening, I'd like to read from Lifting Our Voices, just a bit by Susan York. Give us the child who lives within. Give us a child's eyes that we may receive the beauty and freshness of this day like a sunrise. And so we enter the promise of spring. So welcome everyone. I'm going to start some slides to take us through our 10 enhancements. There we go. And it would be great if you could mute yourself. It looks like it might be Beth. Hi, dear. Thank you. So we have 10 coming up. Thanks for your feedback and your help. Oh, and I started on number four and five. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. Okay. You can always see these on our website. And here's what it looks like, the what's new part of our website. And it goes into multi-platform church support, decentering whiteness, small groups, and here's what we're talking about today, the religious education. Hey, Beth, can you hey. mute yourself, please? Absolutely. So that, that's what we're going to talk about. Then you might notice that we have our themes for next year. Now, what you noticed about our themes, I'm sure if you've been on the webpage, is that we've changed our shift just a little bit. It used to be that we were generally calling ourselves to as a certain people. What does it mean to be a people of imagination? What does it mean to be a people of story, which we just finished? What does it mean to be a people of play, which will be next month? Moving forward, what we're thinking of doing, what we are doing, is what our times specifically call to us as religious people. And so you see phrases. We're going to respond to the call of our times by embracing possibility, by cultivating relationship, by holding history in November, by opening to joy, by living with intention, we're going to respond to the call of our times by widening the circle, by renewing faith, by awakening, by nurturing beauty, and by celebrating blessings. So let's go on to our enhancements that we're going to be implementing for all of our packets. And guess what? These were developed because you filled out our survey, gave us our feedback and helped us craft these packets even better. And we're really excited about it. So the first thing that we're going to do to enhance the RE packets is shift from last year's online resources to in-person and online together. As you know, this multi-platform approach is going to be the new normal. We're moving forward in a different way. I don't think you can say we're going back to the traditional way of doing things. And in Soul Matters, that means that one packet that comes to you, the core packet, is going to be both online and in-person. Because as I talk to DREs, 
we are all wondering what's going, what's September going to be like? And no one knows. And some people, the board is saying, well, you have to craft a program. And they're asking me, well, do I have to buy online and then buy uh, an in-person packet? No, we're going to do them both for that core subscription. And not only is it for our core packets, it's for all of our packets. The core packets, which is the little ones and the second through fifth grade, crossing pads for middle school, the interfaith one, soulful home and chalice home, our family oriented packets, and the on the road youth group packet. Let me just admit a few more people. There we go. That is the best picture for multi-platform. Where did you find that picture? Thank you, Liza. Just scrolling around, it's Unsplash, my, my favorite free picture place. Yeah, I want that. I want that. Okay, so then we're going to increase our Aromac resources. Aromac means anti-racist, anti-oppression, and multicultural resources. We have created a team and one of our members is on and maybe another one, April Rosario is one of our members. We are, have created a widening the circle research team to create practical resources for our packets. If you have been reading Widening the Circle of Concern or if you haven't, which some of us are just finding the time to exist, thank you very much. Soul Matters is gonna be providing you with practical resources, thanks to this research team. <clears throat> it's a new um, model we're trying in so far. It's really exciting. We've got four members of that team. So that's our number two enhancement. Number three enhancement is we're going to increase those Aramac resources. So as you may know, last year, we had one dedicated anti-racism session. Um, what we've been told by the Aramac leaders now is that as we mature into this journey towards wholeness, we'd like to have the resources integrated rather than one session on anti-racism. So we are going to be integrating those resources. In addition, we will have some strategic full Aromax sessions. The fourth RE enhancement, let me just get there, she's in is that we're going to have a direct focus on the spiritual needs of BIPOC children and families. BIPOC means black indigenous and people of color. And now here's another way that we are understanding is that before we were saying, okay, we understand that a lot of us have a need to understand how to what white supremacy is. Let me just get to my notes. And we were focused on an awareness of those white supremacy sy systems. We're helping white UUs become better allies. This coming year, we want to increase the material and resources that are centered on our needs of people of color. That is where the widening of search. Uh, circle research team will be integral. We need your understanding and help because we are finding out just now what kinds of resources we want to put in here. Number five, we're going to increase the amount of wisdom tales. This was right from the survey. Everybody wanted more wisdom tales and more time for all ages suggestions. So these will be including tales that are told rather than books that are read. And as a little postscript to this slide, I'll let you know that we are in conversation with our commissioned songwriter, Leah Morris. And hopefully she will be doing some work for us in terms of 
some tale telling and some songs that are going to be jointly together. It's happening as we speak. So it's just a postscript as the, at this point, I can't make a formal announcement. Number six. So this is another piece of that time for all ages uh, expansion. We're going to enhance those resources so that it's not just picture books, it's not just wisdom tales, but it's also ways to get a point or a lesson across that's not a tale. I've seen science demonstrations by the local archaeologist. I've seen musical moments by the harp player. Of course, we have seen skits up there. We've We've, a lot of us have used the Wonderbox object lessons as Time for All Ages and guest star visits. So we're going to keep that expanding because as we found out online on those Zoom services, it's a time when we can expand and do things truly for all ages because maybe there's no children in the room <laughs> on that Zoom meeting or they're sitting over across the room um, on their parents' sofa. We're going to continue to refine our meditation resources. Right at the end of the packets this year, I came across a meditative story type of meditation and it, something that was written up in an NPR article, something that a group of people are doing. And it's very powerful. We found it very powerful from those of you who tried it. So we're going to keep that going. And we're gonna also, as always, uh, increase our body-based movement for the children. We're going to make sure our little one's packet is age appropriate and pre-K to first grade. My first degree was on child, early childhood education. It's one of my loves. And I have to admit, as we move to online, it got a little bit not age appropriate. It got a little older and I tried my hardest, but I will do better this year. Number nine is we are looking for adding an additional staff person to help with the design of our youth packets. This would be a consistent, dependable thought partner and resource collector to meet with me. So if you know of anyone, some rock star youth advisor, let me know. Shoot me an email at soulmattersre at gmail.com. We're gonna expand our pet crossing pads lineup as promised. Last year we added paganism and everyone gave us a big head, heads, yay. <laughs> and this year we're adding humanism. As I mentioned before, it will be multi-platform so you can offer it online and in person. And the exciting news coming out is that as 12 to 17 year olds can receive the vaccine, we're starting to be able to imagine an all on person crossing paths for our middle schoolers. But how nice it was to interview the rabbi by Zoom. So you see how that multi-platform can take us forward into new things. That's number 10. So I'm wondering if we have 11. So just as we were creating these slides, another one came up. We had some references that Soulful Home was being used by our smaller congregations. And it would be helpful, please, if it came out one month in advance instead of just a, uh, half a month in advance. So guess what? It's going to come out one month in advance. And then of course, Teresa and I were talking and I'm thinking, oh, how are people using Chalice Home? Well, indeed, we got feedback that said some people are using Chalice Home, those two worships, as their children's chapel for their RE program. And so 
I would love to know how you're using Chalice Home. And if you're using it programmatically, let me know and we can consider moving that deadline around a little bit. Does anyone have any other ideas? for other RE enhancements, things you would love to see. Katie, I would love to see um, chalice lighting that's appropriate for the youngers, littles, and what I call middles, like, you know, the elementary ages. Um, that align with the monthly theme. It could even just be one a month that we use for all the Sundays in that month, mm -hmm. um, but something new each time. Cause I feel like I'm always searching and um, sometimes adapting adult versions to the younger. So that would be great. All right, thank you. Chalice lightings for the little guys and the elementary. Thank you for that feedback. We will certainly put that in the hopper. Other things. Katie, what we've been doing with that chalice lighting is um, each class has their own chalice lighting that they um, that they memorize. And what we're finding is then if they have the same chalice lighting all year, it's just a different take on this. Um, if they have the same chalice lighting all year, then we find that by, I think it was by October, then families were telling us, oh yeah, uh, Clark led the chalice lighting at home the other on Sunday night and because he's learned the new chalice lighting at, at children, chalice kids, his class. So when you start getting those reports of that repetition, mm -hmm. helping those kids learn a basic chalice lighting, that's really helpful too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, the, and I did that as well to this quiet place of beauty. We come from busy things, pausing for a moment for the thoughts that quiet brings. Those things that we learn by heart then become in our hearts. So yeah. yes, that's I part of the balance, isn't it? It is part of the balance. When my kids were little, and I mean, they're now in their um, late 20s, um, one of the things that they found is the love is the spirit of this home, house and services is law. When anybody asked them about their faith, like on the bus at school, and it made them nervous, that was the thing that came up because no one can bicker about love. That's right. That's right. All right. Yes. It's so much. It seems um, like you've just put out a huge buffet and now you're asking what else we want to eat. But since you asked, um, I don't, I don't know if you have included in the multi platform resources. I know that a lot of congregations have started to do some hands-on distribution of materials. Um, I'm thinking of your clever adaptation of the Magic 8-Ball resource, um, yeah. and how we could print it out. And so I didn't know if there was that already incorporated each month or where that might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, the balance, because for some smaller congregations, a packet is wonderful. For the larger ones where you're sending out to 150 children, it's a little overwhelming. So yes, but yes, we know a lot of you are doing it. Um, it's a balance act, but yes. Welcome to the buffet, Liza. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, I haven't done much with Soulful Home or Chalice Home. Basically, ch I, it sounds like Chalice Home is um, an at-home sort of family-friendly worship and Soulful Home is activities a menu of things to consider doing during the month, right? Conversation right. prompts and things like that. Okay. Right. Yes. So what you're already doing, making that part of your spiritual life is soulful home. An add-on of like a, like the Hindu shrine, like the Buddhist temple, like the chalice home, an add-on worship that highlights something. And there's two per month in chalice home. Bringing church into the home. Yeah. Katie, right. I could add that I used Chalice Home last summer and we started at the beginning and did one every week throughout the summer. So by the end of the summer, when we went into um, our 
Soul Matters curriculum, they had set up a nice chalice, um, you know, altar at their homes ready to use each Sunday. Um, oh. Yeah. And then we really didn't add much to it throughout the year, but that was a great way to get them pulled together and started. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I do use, um, each of our groups has a chalice lighting that they know and use as you're referring to. Mm -hmm. But I find like that reputation is almost too much. Like I want a little bit of variation. So mm -hmm. like I said, if I could vary the one that I use with one for the monthly theme, I think that would be ideal personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what these lovely child lightings are that you all have memorized. And so maybe a resource list of some of those classic tried and true children's child lightings. Because I've tried, you know, Googling on the worship web and there aren't very many children or little children ones. That's so a great idea. I think a lot of yeah. them are through um, Tapestry of Faith is where I pulled them from different curricula and, chap and tapestry of faith. And I'll start a, I'll start a crowdsourcing uh, Google Doc for that too. All right, good ideas, you folks. Looks like some things are happening on the chat too. All right, there's our 10 new enhancements. So if you came on late and you wanna revisit these slides, we're gonna post the slides and of course, um, there's the whole What's New page, which reviews this as well. It's going to be in two places. One is our members page, and you may come in. There it is at our top. This goes through all of our resources for you guys. That's our members page. And it also is going to be posted on the What's New page. Of course, obviously, it isn't there yet, but there's some general what's new, small groups, and there's the religious education where we went through all of these things as well. And it will be posted on that one too. And as always, we, as you know, Soul Matters has very many wide and deep resources. My goodness, sometimes I can't even keep track of them. So don't feel shy to contact me with help discerning this, just like we were talking about what's the difference between Chalice Home and Soulful Home what's included in the core packets, all these things. Uh, I'm glad to talk to you about them. Let me just stop sharing. There we go. Look at this wonderful pack of people. I'm so glad that you were able to attend. Oh my goodness. And I wonder <laughs> if you have any more questions before I do the readings. I, I have a question. Um, with the um, which I which I support with the movement to more wisdom tales and storytelling, um, one of the things that I think becomes uncomfortable for people who aren't comfortable with storytelling, which is some of our leaders, um, is is um, help for them to learn how to storytell as opposed to read the story. And so I'd be curious just if, if any of you have, um, I mean, I have, you know, I can't just hand them, hand them the, um, the telling the tale book and tell them to read it, <laughs> you know. Have any of you um, done sessions with your RE facilitators where maybe you've, you've sat down and done it as part of your training? And if you do, do you have anything um, that you'd be willing to share that I'd be curious and if anybody wants to because I, I'm going to do something like that and I just thought if I don't have to reinvent the wheel <laughs> so a good telling that's the book I'm thinking about I was going to base it on you know something from a good telling um, we don't have anybody who's trained in spirit play in my congregation anymore I haven't been trained in spirit play and when we were moving I um found two huge Rubbermaid totes full of spirit play resources oh, in, in sure. Ziploc bags and um, from two religious educators ago. And I've been told that the, you know, the, the leaders didn't want to do those things anymore because they weren't comfortable. I mean, this is a new congregation I'm in. So anyways, anybody has anything? Yep. 
Maybe that could go in the chat for Jenny too. Cool, you guys. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah, there we go. Hey, Katie, I uh, popped into the oh, chat about um, our religious ed program starts as close to August 1st as it can because our public schools uh, come then. And so it's always a challenge to get the, uh, really the startup stuff for uh, September. So we try to push it forward and it eh, kind of doesn't, doesn't click. Any advice on that for congregations that start up in August? Uh, you, well, one came up on this recording, which is to use the chalice home possibility. Right. The other would be to use some of the play, extend play through the summer. That's what mm -hmm. several people are doing. Um, another one would be to go to our resources and buy an individual packet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking that yeah. I did for this year. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was a flexible thing and if there was any way to even get two weeks of August. Um, but you know, the, the calendar is set for September through June. The other thing I've looked at is taking June and wrapping it into August, yeah. shifting the June curricula. I've heard of some people doing that. And as always, it's like Legos, build it the way you want. Build it, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Someday Legos is going to hear us say that and they're going to be like, you're breaking copyright or something. I don't know. Any other good comments, suggestions, questions? What's new for next year? I saw a question about integrating spirit play skills into um, the little kids' core classes, and we do that now. We'll take the story and kind of, um, you know, they were talking about finding the Ziploc bags of the other stories from spirit play. We will take um, the the current lesson or class the, for the little kids' story, and we'll put together a spirit play lesson. And honestly, I, I wish there were more spirit play trainings. It really is wonderful um, work for, and, and it does integrate nicely with the stories we tell. And you can even use spirit play for meditation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really successful with our little kiddos. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's all good. We have all these good resources floating around. Okay, we'll take a deep breath and share with you this closing by Matt Meyer. May we go forward in purposeful rhythm that we may give voice to the melody of our imaginations, the music of our souls, and all the possibilities of a just world as we might together create it. Go in peace, everyone. Thank you.